Hello there and welcome to the official BrainBird Showcase. In this video I will pretty much cover in short terms the progress of BrainBread Source. I am Bird, also known as Pretador, the current programmer for BrainBread Source. I thought it would be a nice idea to show the fans how far we've actually gotten. Considering that we actually wanted this mod to be released in December last year, and you all saw that that didn't work out pretty well. However, the biggest reason for the release not coming out last year was that we were missing quite a bit of models and animations. So, if you do animation or modeling or know someone who does, then you really should contact me or Johnny Boy because we, we are in dire need of a full time modeler, an animator, or someone who can do both. That would be also pretty cool. Anyways, I will now show off the launcher. As you might have heard, BrainBread needs to be open through this launcher. So if you actually try to start BrainBread from Steam, it will not work. It says you must use the launcher to play DBS. And the whole clue with this is we don't want anyone to be able to play. You must have a verified game account. And to make a game account, you could either do that on the launcher or you can do it on the home page. When you've made an account, you have to verify it. And how do you verify it? You simply need to grab an alpha key and write it in, and then you will be verified. Note that you cannot use the same key more than once. So, if, if the same alpha key has been given out to many people, then, it, then it, the chance for that alpha key to be gone is quite high. So you got to be quick with using your alpha key. So now I will pretty much open the launcher. to talk with all the background music. Right, let's go back to the front screen. This is how the launcher looks for everyone in the first place. When you click this link you get the form to create an account. You simply write in the account name you wish, your password and the Steam ID. This field is very important. The Steam ID has to be in this old format. But right now it's not being verified so you can actually write whatever you like it's not really gonna matter if you write whatever you like but the problem will be that you will not be able to play in game if you write a wrong steam ID simply because the game checks your actually steam ID it checks the actual currently logged in steam ID so if that steam ID does not match with the one on your account it will not allow you to play on any server, even your own. So, I will log in on my account. My account is verified, and therefore I will see all of these pages, including these. If you're not verified, nothing of this will be visible. The only thing you'll have is the home page, and this, this is the news feed which is constantly being updated. It's kind of linked to the home page. And yeah, so if, if you're not verified, you will have a box here where you write in the alpha key and you can check it. Once it gets verified, you will see what I see right now. This page lets you disable music. You can download a base build, which is the full brain bread stable build. You can do this, for example, if your build is broken or corrupt or if you have a very old build, then you could do that. You can download the SDK if you want to make custom maps and such. 
and you can edit your account such as your password or your Steam ID if you wrote the wrong or faulty Steam ID. Note that, that you can only have one Steam ID per account. You can't have the same Steam ID on more than one account. Here you check for updates. This one basically gives you updates for either the launcher or the game. So if you actually have an outdated version of the game, you click on launch, it will ask you to check for updates and it will not allow you to play if you have the latest version. Here I can install add-ons. Yeah, if you're actually verified, you can upload whatever you wish. However, we have to manually approve your add-ons just to make sure that it's not a virus or something inappropriate. So your add-ons will not be listed here until they have actually been approved or authorized. This is the form where you upload. You choose what type it is. Name and version, tags, so people can search for it, description, and the file and the image preview. The image preview will be shown on the home page, but we'll also have a way to download and stuff like that on the home page. And the file must not exceed 12 megabytes, and the image cannot exceed 3 megabytes. Just to, because if, if there's a lot of uploads, it will pretty much be quite heavy for our FTP server. And here you can modify and delete if you want to re-upload a new file to the same add-on or if you just want to delete it. And the scoreboard is basically listing all the maps that have been played. Whenever when you're playing on a server and the map ends, it will basically transfer all the data to our database such as kills and deaths. We will add more here later on, such as level and perhaps preferred weapon and such. But right now this is what info it holds. That's pretty much the concept behind that. And now let's go ahead and launch BBS. This is the current main menu. There are yet more to be added on this one. But now this is more like just grab some placeholder. Single player opens the create a map. I made a new panel for the create the map. Just cause yeah, I wanted it to be a little bit more dynamic. As you see we now draw all this information from a script file. So you can like tell give more information about your map to people who don't know anything about your map. This is the current stable map and this is a test map. So I will pretty much just go into this map and mess around. character menu. The awesome part with this menu is it's so dynamic. You can add as many characters as you want in this menu. They will be dynamically pre-caged when the server is created. And it will create a resource file so that everyone who joins your server will actually download your custom characters. So it's going to be very similar to the cool features you had in Gold Source Engine, such as Sven Coop change your player model to whatever you wish. Even if the other clients didn't have that model, that's what we will. They have actually implemented that into BBS. And yeah, this is all by a script file. The model, the animations and everything. And some brief information about the character. Here we have the round timer. All the way down to the left side. You see the level and the health. And further up, you see the red layout saying get no, which is basically where you the object with. So the interface will definitely be changed. Here 
right now I still haven't changed the weapon selection. That's a nice thing. And in the middle, you see at how many points I have spent for either agility, skill, or help. And to the right, you see the points I can spend and the ammo I hold in my gun. So if I want to spend my points, there is no button to enable a cursor like you did in Rainbred. Instead, we, we are pretty much just uh, added simple buttons for each menu. Like if I want to open the skill back here, which I and I would click on B for the health, for example, we still haven't made a skill menu or weapon menu. We're pretty much using the default crappy half life animations. So yeah, we really need new animations, both for the player models and the NPCs. I can go ahead and make... They've also added classic military NPCs. I'll go ahead and make them. Pretty much, if you get affected, there's like this random, totally random counter. So if you get attacked by a zombie, there is an X amount of chance for you to actually become a zombie. You can actually reduce that chance by clicking on the health menu. You can, you can like increase the resistance to infection here. Four humanoid players or NPCs become a human again. So let's go ahead and go on to the mode. But when you kill, for example, four NPCs now, you will not spawn as a zombie before you die. So now I'll take a Suda, I should now spawn as a human. Yeah, there you go. And this is a temporary model for the briefcase. So if I pick up the briefcase, it will not allow me to change any weapon. I can drop it there. And I will go yellow while holding it. So that all my friendly or humanoid players will be able to see where I am at. So that I could protect and escort it to the drop-off point. This map is currently in full bright, so it's going to have to see the low effect. Currently now we only allow 10 objectives, and you can have radar icons. The radar is currently a little bugged, it will definitely be fixed. And 
So yeah, here I can change burning speed, reload speed, and whatsoever. And if you want to change it or whatever, sell it, that is possible too. However, if you buy these, there's no need for you won't be able to sell it. But now this is a temporary player or a temporary weapon. Older model. Current values. But the different menus are pretty high just for testing purposes. send all the score to the database and we will now see this score 103 kills and 9 deaths will be added to the current scores in the database now we can go ahead and check that Sure enough, 70 kills, 9 deaths. Right, I don't think there's much more to uncover. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil everything. There's a lot of cool things that have been added, though. But we need a lot of more models and animations before we release the alpha. Alpha keys will probably be handed out slightly before the release date of the post alpha. But yeah, until that. Or until next time, have a good day.